Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Minding a Max, Episode 7, where today we take some thermal imaging of the Times Vape Dreamer. We're going to do the stainless steel, which had the uh, greatest power loss, about 8 watts, and the copper, which had the lowest power loss, about 1.3 to 1.7 watts, uh, 1.3 watts, to compare directly to the stainless steel. That's both with a 2700 battery slug. This is a different uh, display for my cheapo several-year-old $99 imaging camera which I think I will be upgrading. But right now, uh, this is it. But I've also taken away the spot temperature readings because this is not a vaping simulation. This is just accelerated heating to find out where heat occurs. You know, does it occur down here at these threads? Does it occur at these threads here? Does it occur over the whole body? Um, the actual temperature doesn't matter. What we're looking for is, is a way to not have you sit here for an hour while I do a vaping simulation with chain vaping so you can see where the heat's coming from. Knowing where the heat comes from, if we want to, can affect our decision. Uh, it also helps a designer, perhaps, who might want to optimize the design of the mech, but it also really tells us where we're spending the most time or where it matters the most uh, to keep it clean. If these threads are where all the heat comes from, up in here, for the hybrid top cap, and uh, this is my fingers on the uh, uh, drip tip. There's the atomizer. And then the body of the mech is between my fingers. Uh, if we see all the heat coming over here, where the hybrid top cap threads are, well, those are the ones we're going to make sure are absolutely clean. If we see the heat down here in the button, well, that's going to be our top priority to keep clean. So it can help to know where the heat's coming from. Now, each mech is wrapped head to toe, including the atomizer, in black electrical tape to increase its emissivity, that is, its ability to emit infrared radiation, because metal sucks at it and reflects infrared from all over the place, so you're not reading, you're reading low the temperature of the metal itself, and you may end up reading the temperature, infrared temperature of a reflection, a hot light source or something like that, as opposed to the mech. Putting something that's fairly matte over the surface of it, yes, it reduces the temperature you read a couple of degrees, but we don't care about the temperature. We just care where is the heat coming from. And electrical tape is an easy way to do that. Flat, back, flat black paint is also a great way to do it too. But this is just a lot easier to do because I may need these uh, not covered in paint if I do any other resistance measurements. Okay, we've got 30 amps ready to flow. And let's start it up. This is the stainless steel one. Works much better when I actually turn the electronic load on. And you can actually see up over here how it's a little bit warmer. Those were from previous tests, the exhaust, the hot air coming out of the uh, electronic load. And uh, that was where my hand was resting before. So these cameras can some pretty interesting stuff, interesting stuff. Okay, so that is the heat, or the 30 amps being applied. You can see temperatures rising a little bit there. That is the button. And we want to, and you can also see a little bit down here. The atomizer is staying cold because there's no coil there. But where the threads are, now the whole mech is actually heating up some as it pulls heat away from the ends, but you can see the button and it's definitely the one where the heat is being created just a tiny bit up on top. Certainly not any kind of high temperature at all, and this is, you know, we're, we're below 40 Celsius. We're not even warm yet. Yeah, we're not even warm yet, and this is 30 amps continuous. Okay, that's about as brutal as it's going to get. And we can just leave this. So, a little bit of heating here, so that you can see the Mac. You see a little clearer now where the atomizer, atomizer is staying cool. Some of the heat from the mech is coming up through the atomizer, otherwise fairly even heating here. Now you can see the heat from the button, excuse me, from the button working its way up. And this just never got hot or anything, uh, certainly on the outside, but it shows you that for the 8.7 watts of heat or so that this creates, most of that is created down here in the button. And I'll be right back after switching to the copper mod and wrapping it in tape. Okay, and here is the copper one already. I didn't mention this down at this end. There's an eighth inch piece of plastic here just stuck onto the button so my finger doesn't heat up uh, the bottom of the mech as I'm doing anything. And let's get started with 30 amps 
and now. And it took a few seconds for the uh, stainless steel. I would expect that uh, it would take a little bit longer here. It would be interesting to see if the high thermal conductivity of copper can pull away the small amount of heat that the button makes so we really don't read any hotter spots, certainly not hot spots, but hotter spots. Uh, the bottom is maybe a touch warmer, like one degree warmer maybe, where the button is. Uh, no, that's looking pretty even. I'm trying to rotate it here without heating it up with my fingers. This whole time I've been applying 30 amps continuous just to show there's a thumb made a little bit of a lighter point there. Alright, the mech is I don't know, maybe it's one or two degrees one degree, two degrees hotter. You can see the bottom is just a tiny, tiny bit warmer than the rest. Another degree warmer than the rest of something but this whole time it's continuous 30 amps and it's only gone up a couple degrees or something like that and certainly not any kind of uh, obvious heating like we had before with stainless steel down in the butt which makes sense this is only 1.3 watts for the whole thing versus 8.7 watts for the stainless steel and that's gonna be I think enough so there's the difference with copper that 7 watts less heat results in much lower all much lower overall heating but also less spot heating there's much less down here and there was essentially nothing over there there's just pretty well even heating here because the copper is so good at pulling the heat all the way through that's it for this episode thank you for watching